So many people, our listeners, would uh, perhaps many relate to you, many probably would relate to this love of bodybuilding, but let's say outsiders who have an appreciation for it, and upon realizing that you are not, let's say, the same, getting the same compensation as a pro athlete, let's say in the NFL, NBA, MLB, what drives you to do this considering the uh, utmost sacrifice? Meaning that, for example, in a sport, you know, you don't lose the skill. You don't lose your skill, per se, uh, fighting, throwing a ball, dunking, you know, whatever logistics in basketball, football, technique, strategy. You don't lose that, per se, from, you know, let's say cheating on a diet. The skill is still there. You know, we all know that some athletes have abysmal diets, maybe not the best sleeping habits or other habits in their life, but they still succeed. With bodybuilding, it seems that this is 24-7 from sleep eating, uh, reduction of stress in your life, things not interfering with your schedule. I mean, we all know that, you know, let's say someone took some time off from a skill type of sport, the skill pretty much is still there. With bodybuilding, it's unrelenting. You slip on the diet, you slip on the workouts, you're backtracked to a degree, yeah. or even maybe to a large degree. I mean, it does all add up. So what, what drives you here? Uh, passion. I love, I love bodybuilding. If anybody is doing it strictly for the trophies, the recognition, or the the fame, I mean, um, if it's only for those reasons, I don't think they'll succeed. You know, and I think that goes for professional athletes as well, NBA, NFL. I mean, if you're just doing it as a job and an income, you're probably not going to be the best. You're not going to be Kobe Bryant, you know. Um, it's definitely a passion, you know. But a bodybuilding is tough to make a living. We don't make the living that... that uh, that pro athletes make nowadays. Not all of them, but you know, the, the elite. But, um, you know, you can make a living from it. You can be, if you're marketable or if you're smart or whatever the case may be. Me personally, it's always been a hobby for me. I have my own career. In the future, if things change, great, they change. But I don't think that I'm gonna, I never thought that I was gonna be rich and famous from this. I just had a passion to as a bodybuilder and always wanted to be my best you know I always aspired to look like a statue yes and this was before I ever even considered competing that was always my goal you know so regular people always you know oh my goodness it's like how do you eat like that how do you do this uh, I, I don't expect everybody to do this but I think that's this day and age in today's society people it's so astronomical but if you rewind back in the day before vending machines and McDonald's and fast food it, you know, eating the way we eat is kind of the norm. You know, the early humans ate this way. Yes. You know, so we're kind of doing what's more natural. Now, I'm not talking about going to the gym and pounding weights, but right. the early humans were more active and they ate a more, a healthier, non-processed diet, like a paleo diet, for instance. And regular people nowadays are eating processed crap and food that's terrible for them. If I stop competing tomorrow, I'm not going to eat that stuff. I mean, occasionally do you have a craving for something or fast food? Okay, that's fine, but not on a daily basis. You know, if, I mean, the girl today in the grocery store was like, oh my goodness, how do you do that? It's so hard. So how do you lose body fat? I said, well, you know, it's, it has to do with what you put into your body, how you eat, and, and you know, a little bit of training, a little bit of cardio, but you could probably lose it without even training. Oh, that's so difficult. Forget it. Okay, <laughs> what do you think I was going to say? Like, hang upside down and you know, wash your hands. So, when there's a will, there's a way. People, right. people think this is crazy, but what I think is crazy is going to school for four years, then going to another school maybe for another two or four years to go work in a job that you're ultimately not happy in to buy shit you don't need and pay bills. How? Like, you know, how do you, yeah. how do you differentiate? People put so much time and effort into shit that doesn't make a difference in their lives. Materialistic things, upgrading their cars and their clothes and their TVs, but they don't care about their bodies. Not everybody has to look like us. I don't think everybody needs to be, look like me. This is the way I want to look. I would never right. put this on anyone else, but do I think people should make an effort to, to be healthy and in shape? Absolutely. You know, for their own health, for, for the respect of the person that they're with you know some people just completely let themselves go and there's really no excuse for that you know but it's just it just 
becomes the norm. The reason that we have this conversation is because bodybuilding is not the norm. The norm is neglecting your health. It's, I think it's changing now. Over the past decade, people are a little bit more conscious, you know, GMO-free foods, organic, grass-fed, so on and so forth. But, I mean, when you look at your, the average American, the way that they eat and the lack of activity that they do, it's like, it's, a, it's basically a form of self-destruction. Yes, of course. I mean, I agree with you definitely. I mean, you know, we do have an obesity epidemic in this country. Uh, you know, I work in healthcare as a registered dietitian. I see people that are relatively young, let's say even in their 30s to 50s, who already have, uh, you know, God knows how many disorders. You know, they have diabetes, renal failure, hypertension, you know, coronary artery disease, uh, congestive heart failure. And I have seen that many diagnoses in the same person. Uh, and uh, a litany of drugs uh, to the point where uh, I just, you know, a lot of this is from neglect. And Arash, as you're saying, not everybody has to take it to this extreme. No one has to be in the gym 10 hours a week. But, you know, a good, you know, I don't know, whatever person, a working person with a family can do, you know, three to five hours, you know, maybe if you're a busy, really, really busy, maybe at least three hours, take care of what you eat. Go for a jog, be a weekend warrior, you know, play paddle ball in the summer, do something, uh, go to the racquetball court indoors, swimming in the indoors when it's the winter time, but do something. Uh, but, you know, as you, as, uh, you uh, see the people, folks listening to this, that this is a passion. This is not for material rewards for many people that are involved in it. Um, uh, and so, you know, let, let's just run down, like, I mean, has... has uh, where I'm going with this is that you know, your training has always been hard. Uh, what what are you what are you are you like a you know there's this tendency to put people in classifications like oh this is guy is like a you know a high intensity guy low volume guy this guy's like a pumper this guy's a high volume guy uh, you know what is your style? Um, not to discredit any other style, I've, I've over the 22 years I've tried everything, and for me. Um, always high intensity heavy lifting and a little bit lower on the volume i get carried away sometimes like i was telling you earlier like yesterday i just got into a zone and next thing i knew i, I feel like i did too much for back if you're eating a ton of calories and you're just a big boy and you're on a ton of supplements and yeah you can you can train more you can endure longer sessions i can train for long periods of time and continue to train heavy but what i found is it doesn't it doesn't benefit me any more than keeping a certain volume like like a max ot style training right from jeff willett skip lacour from years ago dorian style training so i kind of took on to that style of training in my mid-20s where i'd warm up and then i'd get to my working weight as soon as possible instead of doing 135 on the bench then 175 and 225 and 275 i mean the 275 is where you're going to push yourself and get stronger and grow. So what is all that, the rest of that weight too? It'll weaken you. So you do less intense and less reps at 275. So what I'll do is I'll warm up adequately. And what that means is whatever it means. It takes 10 minutes. It takes 15 minutes. It takes two or three sets. I'll warm up. Nothing too, too heavy. Um, warming up is going to weaken you no matter how you look at it. But I'll warm up adequately. Make sure I'm warmed up. I won't jump from... 200 pounds to 500, but I'll, I'll do an acclimating, uh, acclimation set. I'll acclimate to the heavy weight. So I get my central nervous system ready for the load. I'll do maybe 80%, 85% of my working weight, just like for one or two reps. Right. And then I start to work. And then I'll do three, four working sets there. I do, when, when we say heavy, I mean heavy means heavy for you, heavy for me. 40 pound dumbbells on a press might be heavy for someone. But well, you know, we say 10 to 12. Everyone throws these numbers around, eight to 10, six to eight. But I don't think a lot of people understand what that means. 10 to 12 means if you can't do 10 reps, the weight's too heavy. Right. If you can do more than 12 reps, the weight is too light. Right. I see people in the gym going nine, 10, 11, 12, they put the weight down. That's not what it should look like. 10, 11, 12 should look really, really exhausting and really <laughs> difficult. Yeah, if but you reach 12 like that and you just throw the weight down, then that's not a working set, you know? So I guess what I'm saying here is, yeah, blunt force trauma, heavy weight. It'll force the body to strengthen and grow. And we have fast twitch and slow twitch muscle fibers. When, you know, slow twitch muscle fiber, when you train them, you're only training the slow twitch muscle fiber. The fast twitch muscle fiber is the muscle fiber that, you know, football players have, sprinters have, 
uh, more of, and, and, and it gives us that big round look, that big muscular look, the bodybuilding look that we like. But the beauty in it is when you train the fast twitch muscle fiber, you're actually training the slow twitch as well. So lightweight, higher volume, for a beginner, absolutely. Yeah, for a beginner, anything works. I mean, your first year of bodybuilding, your first year of lifting weights is, um, is like your first year of human's first year of birth. You're gonna grow the most your first year. A baby grows the most from day one to day 365. We don't grow at that rate anymore. Uh, if we did, we'd be like 50 feet tall, 3,000 pounds. So anything works, you know, you can, you can pretty much throw anything at a beginner and they're gonna build muscle. But if at, at, at our level, like body weight exercises and low, low reps, uh, I'm sorry, low weight and high reps, it doesn't do much. And probably the biggest misconception in this sport is that when you're trying to get lean, when you're trying to get a beach body, you want to do lighter weight, higher reps. And that's the worst thing you can do. First of all, that's called cardio. Second of all, it'll whittle away your muscles. Maybe you'll get leaner because you're doing more and you're sweating, your heart rate's going up, but you can do that in cardio. You're going to lose fullness and thickness in the muscle. It's gonna flatten out and kind of like wither away. You wanna to continue to lift heavy. It'll help you hold your muscle, give you a harder, rounder look, and also lifting heavy burns a lot of calories. You might not be running around the gym. You might take up to three minutes in some lifts in between. Anything more than three, I think, is just worthless, but you, you don't, your ATP doesn't recover as much. You know, up to one, one to three minutes, yes. two, two and change. But, um. I genuinely believe in, in lifting heavy, pushing yourself uh, on a weekly basis. Bodybuilding is a progressive sport. You need to be progressing one of three things on a weekly basis. You need to be progressively increasing weight, progressively increasing te te intensity, or volume. It's all three won't increase. You're not gonna go up and weight every week. But if you do 200 pounds for 10 this week, maybe next week you do 200 pounds for 11. Maybe the week after you do 200 pounds again for 11, but better control better contraction and then the next week you do 210 pounds and you progressively increase and just for the people that are watching that might not be competitive bodybuilders we always use the word bodybuilding bodybuilding everyone in the gym man woman or child that's not in the gym for strength gain strictly is a bodybuilder i tell the regular guy in the gym oh you're a bodybuilder he's like oh no no i don't i don't i don't have posing trunks i don't do shows if you're in the gym for any change in body composition to get a little toned, to lose a little bit of weight, change maybe a little, little tone in the arms, a little smaller in the waist, or get a six pack, that's bodybuilding. Bodybuilding doesn't mean you oil yourself up and stand on stage. Bodybuilding is building the body. If you going on a Jenny Craig diet and doing cardio, you, that's, you're building your body. You're doing, you're changing some kind of, you're changing, making changes in body composition trying to increase muscle a little bit or just trying to decrease fat. That's what bodybuilding is, you know? And, and everyone in the health industry, in the fitness industry, in the weight loss industry, in athletes and celebrities, they all learn from bodybuilders from the early, from the early ages, the early days of, you know, the 60s and 70s. Everyone's learned from us because we're the masters at changes in body composition. Exactly. Now, one other question to uh, wrap this segment up is, uh, you know, a lot of people um, discredit. See, you've given a lot of detail. I know you're very detailed. The people that you mentioned are detailed, such as uh, Dorian Yates, Skip LaCour, Jeff Willett, the low-volume kind of guys who really thought about their training a lot. Uh, some people, even on the Internet, some of these, you know, so-called YouTube fitness celebrity fitness experts, you know, some of them will say, well, it's all drugs and uh, the training, it doesn't matter. You know, it, it, it doesn't matter that this guy would look like this anyway, look at the genes on this guy. But then again, I don't think that. I mean, I'm not competing in Olympia. I'm not, I, I'm not competing in the, in the divisions. Never will, actually. Um, I'm not there. Uh, but my view is, as a fan, as a longtime fan, is that the guys who are doing the best are the guys who pay attention to their training. Yeah, the genes are there. Yes, whatever anabolics are there, whatever supplements are there. But the guys who are on top, who, or were on top, like Dorian Yates, Ronnie Coleman, Kai Green, uh, Phil Heath, although I'm not too knowledgeable about how he trains, but Jay Cutler seemed like he had a good grasp on what he was doing, very methodical. What do you think about that? Because me, I look at it, these guys had it, but they still were very conscientious about what they were doing. I don't like to discredit people and say, well, this guy was just, 
even if this guy was lazy, like people point to Paul DeLay or uh, Flex Wheeler saying those guys were just genes and drugs. I mean, what do you think? I mean, you, you know where I'm going? Look, look, first and foremost, genetics is, is the number one biggest factor. We, we all know that. Yes. So what, what do I mean? If you don't have great genetics, you can't look good? No, you can. But all things being equal, training, diet, and drugs, one guy has elite genetics, the other one has above average genetics, this guy's going to look better with elite genetics. So that, that's just right. genetics over, over rules everything. Now, if you have a genetically gifted athlete that's lazy, not smart, doesn't put in the work, is he going to be the best just because he has good genetics? No. Now, the second very important topic is drug use. So that's one of the reasons bodybuilding hasn't gone mainstream because it's, you look at a bodybuilder and it looks like drugs. Although all other athletes, football players, baseball players, yes. basketball players, Olympic athletes, they, they take drugs as well, but they don't look like it. Right. Okay? So that's, that's an issue in sport why, in my opinion, it hasn't really gone mainstream. That being said, if anybody out there thinks that you can look like those guys, the top 10 Olympians, just because they take drugs, you could look like them by taking drugs, go ahead. Mm. Be my guess. <laughs> you right. know, I, I've seen guys on boatloads of, of drugs that don't even look like they work out. You gotta put in the work, you gotta train hard, and you have to be knowledgeable. This is a science, you have to be eating. You can't fake eating five to 10 meals a day. You can't fake training hard. You know, you can't just go into the gym and, and because you're there five days a week, because you scan your card, you work out. That, you have to work out. I see guys in the gym just going through the motions. I, you better off going home. Spend time with your family. Go play checkers or something. Why are you wasting your time in the gym not giving it your all? And the, the best is the guys that are in the gym at 6 in the morning or right before the gym closes at midnight. Like, that's pretty hardcore. Those are hardcore times to go to the gym and then they're just on their phones texting. Go home, man. You know, you don't need to be here. No one's forcing you to be here. You got to give it your all. You know, the, to go back to your question, everyone trains different. I feel like... Kai and, and Phil train very, very hard, but I don't think they train like Ronnie and Dorian did, which I, I believe in high, high intensity and hard, heavy training, but I believe there, you should know when to pull back. You know, I think Ronnie was one of my favorite bodybuilders, and I watched the Unbelievable DVD maybe a thousand times, and I used to mimic him and eat like him and train like him, and I loved him, and I think he's one of the best bodybuilders of all time and always will be, but... I think he could have been Mr. Olympia a couple more times. I think he could have had a longer career. Same with Dorian. If they knew when to pull back, you know? You don't need to go balls to the wall the way he did two weeks out of a show because you have to understand, he's, he's lifting power lifter weight for volume, reps and sets with extremely low body fat and low water too in his body. That's taxing, man. And it's not nice to see him like learning how to walk again, you know? I, it, it's you know it saddens me to see that so I think that things like that could have been avoided and their careers could have lasted longer or even if their career didn't last longer they wouldn't be in pain now you know? exactly so you know you can't say this is this is right and that's wrong everyone is different I don't believe too much when people say everything you know things work differently for me look we're all human Weight, heavy weight is what makes us all grow. There's no way around that. There's no, you're never going to see a 250 pound dice bodybuilder lifting 20 pounds. It's just not, I mean, unless he has some kind of alien gene, it, just, it doesn't <laughs> exactly. work that yeah. way, you know? But one thing that I think that people say, oh, this works for me or that works for me, a really, really big factor in bodybuilding is here. It's not the drugs, it's not the food, it's not the body, it's here. If I give you a mediocre diet and a mediocre training routine, but you really believe in it because it came from me, it came from Mr. Olympia, it came from Phil Heath, it came from someone that you look up to and you think it's the best routine. And you do this mediocre diet, this mediocre routine, but you give a thousand percent, guess what? You're gonna profit from it, you're gonna benefit from it, you're gonna get bigger, you're gonna get leaner, you're gonna grow from it. But if I give you Phil Heath's routine, but I don't tell you it's Phil Heath's routine, I give you Phil Heath's diet, but I don't tell you, you just think, oh, it's like some shitty diet or some, <laughs> some shitty routine, and you don't believe in it, you don't give it 100%, you're probably not gonna get any results from it. So if you train a certain way, and you really believe that's the way for you, and when you're training, you're envisioning yourself growing, and you, you believe in it, then you're gonna, you're gonna get results from it. Now, could you get more results if you trained like 
like Brad or like Phil or like me, maybe, but the fact of the matter is that's what you're doing, that's what you believe in, and it's gonna show. It's gonna show in your in in, in your body. It's gonna show it's sh when I see a bodybuilder or an athlete always doubting what he's doing, I can see that you know, they don't have right. confidence in what they're doing. That's not the mindset of a champion. Jay Cutler, I think, was an amazing bodybuilder. I don't think he was the best genetically gifted or the best shape. You know, he's a little bit big in the waist. I, I think there's guys that have much better structure or shape than him. I think there's a lot of guys that have better structure and shape than me. I don't think I'm blessed with the best shape. But Jay had the heart of a champion. And he worked very hard. And he was very confident. And he pushed himself very, very hard. And I, I really believe he, he really, he had the mindset. He had the mindset of a champion and it made him a champion. I think if you took Jay's structure and physique and genetics and you took that mindset away, I don't think he ever would have made it where he was. Right. Those are very good points. And that's been a topic of discussion lately on the internet a lot is that having faith in your program and what you're doing, uh, like Arash is saying, is that, you know, eventually you got to settle it on a style and have faith in what you're doing. Meaning go for the routine that suits you. Uh, your structure, what you need to work on, but you know, hit it, you know, with the intensity, with the passion, and believe in what you're doing. I mean, every program is flawed. There's no perfect program, but if you use your brain and some creativity, you will come up with a program that does work for you. Will it work perfectly? Nothing works perfectly. There's always some flaw in the program, but you got to make a decision after a while. I mean, there's no perfect program. You got to make a decision. So, I think it's really good that you know a professional such as yourself is pointing it out. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of program hopping out there. It's information overload with the articles, Facebook, Instagram, and people, you know, chiming in on what you're doing. And you even experience it yourself. Uh, you know, one person saying that you should do this with your diet and the other person says, no, 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 do this. And, you know, take this all in. No, don't take that, 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 guy, that guy's telling you the wrong thing. And we've even seen that happen with the mishaps with some, uh, you know, so-called gurus or coaches telling some guy... Uh, you know, God knows how many things, and even now that we have people, top level guys, <laughs> doubting themselves because of what people are whispering in their ear. So, uh, just to wrap this segment up, I, I really appreciate the information you're giving everybody here, and I'm enjoying this conversation a lot. So, uh, for now, uh, I hope you people have benefited from this segment, and uh, we'll catch you next time. See ya.